Hey guys, Eddie from Priority here. I'm sorry about the flat on your Classic, or your Gotham in this case. Let's talk about fixing it. I'm going to be using the 174 Hudson Multi-Tool. But if you don't have one of those, you can use a 15 millimeter wrench, a four millimeter Allen key, a five millimeter Allen key, and a tire lever, and a pump. Please note, we recommend that any repairs that are done on your bike be done by a professional mechanic. If you choose to follow this video and repair the bike yourself, we suggest taking it down to your local bike shop for a safety check afterwards. Start by shifting the bike into first gear. Now take your five millimeter Allen key and loosen the bell crank. It should only take a couple of turns. Be careful not to bend this pin. So now let's loosen the brakes. To open the brakes on the bike, move the dust cover out of the way. And then with one hand, push one side of the caliper in and pull the noodle. Then you'll see that the cable comes free and the brakes pop open. That'll allow you to pull the rear wheel out. Next, loosen the axle nuts. Make sure you loosen both sides. Now the wheel's loose. So the next step is we want to loosen the belt tensioning bolts here so that we don't have tension on the belt. We're gonna do this quite a bit so that it's easy to just loop the belt off of the front sprocket. So uh, we're gonna use a four millimeter Allen key for this. Uh, it'll help to loosen the belt tension bolts on both sides of the wheel. That way you can get a lot of slack in the belt. Once it's slack enough, you can just loop the belt off of the front sprocket like so. And then just kind of get it, set it aside like so, so that you can pull the rear wheel out like so. And then you can just lay the bike on its side. It's not going anywhere, this won't hurt it. And keep an eye on those uh, belt tension uh, washers there. If you have one of our Classic Plus or Coast models that has a rear coaster brake or pedal brake, then there's a few more steps you need to do before removing the rear wheel. Now we're going to unbolt the coaster brake arm. So we need a 10 millimeter wrench for this and a Phillips screwdriver. I'm using the one from my 174 Hudson Multi-Tool. So I'm gonna use the 10 millimeter wrench on the inside, and I'm going to use the Phillips screwdriver on the outside, and I'm just loosening that inner nut. And we will have to completely remove this in order to do the flat, just to get the wheel all the way off. So just loosen that all the way. So you wanna pull the bolt out. And uh, I think you'll see that there's a little spacer in here that's kind of wedged in place, but that'll pop out when we loosen the rear wheel, which I'll do right now. Make sure you loosen both sides. Yeah, so just grab that little washer, hold on to that, you're gonna reuse it. Just loosen the belt tension bolts. And just slip the belt off of the sprockets and out of the way of the rear wheel. And just remove the rear wheel. Now that the wheel's off the bike, let the rest of the air out of the tire if there's a little left. It's gonna be easiest to take off the rim when it's completely flat. I'm just using the four millimeter Allen key end on here to push the pin in the valve in. So now that that tire's nice and flat, you just kinda of wanna grab it with your hands and just get it as loose as possible uh, in one section. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of pulling on the tire to expose the bead. This is the bead of the tire right here. And that's what you're gonna aim for with your multi-tool. This is the tire lever end of the tool, and that's the part that hooks under the bead and allows you to pry that bead over the edge of the rim. So you're gonna just pry one bead at a time, get it right over the outside, and then pull. And that'll allow you to pull the bead 
from the inside of the rim to the outside of the rim. So now that I've done one, this tire is loose enough that I can just pull the whole thing off. So I don't have to do that with both beads. Lay the wheel down. Be careful of the shift pin on here. You don't want to bend that. So now let's inspect the tire and inner tube. So we got a flat. So that means something punctured our inner tube at some point. So let's take that tube out. Just lay that tire down. The easiest way to figure out what caused your inner tube to puncture is to put some air in it. Once you get some air in the inner tube, you can feel around the outside and the inside of the inner tube to see where the actual puncture is. I'm using my hand to find that, and if it's a really small hole, sometimes if you just put it by your face, you can feel it with your cheek. Um, if it's a hole on the outside of the inner tube, the side opposite the valve, then you know something went through the outside of your tire. If it's a hole on the inside of the inner tube, that means you got probably what's called a pinch flat, where you hit a really big bump, maybe there wasn't enough air pressure in the tire, and it pinched the inner tube between the tire and the rim, uh, causing it to get a flat. But uh, if, you, if the puncture is on the outside, that means that you want to go ahead and inspect the tire to make sure that whatever debris caused the puncture isn't still stuck in there. Um, I, su I suggest just doing this visually around the outside and um, also, you know, sometimes you might do this with a cloth, or if you're, <laughs> if you're a little comfortable or not necessarily worried about it, poking your finger, you can run your hand along the inside of the tire uh, to feel for any debris poking through. Might be a piece of glass, might be a little shard of metal. Uh, so just be careful doing this. So once you've determined the cause of the puncture and you know that there's nothing still stuck in your tire, then you can go ahead and grab your new inner tube. So take your new inner tube, and inflate it slightly so that it just takes the shape of the tire. You don't want it to have any folds when you're installing it in the tire, so partially inflated is the best way to go. Once you get a little air in the inner tube and it's shaped like this, then you can start feeding it into the tire. So just work your way around, feed it in there. and find your valve. So now take your rim and orient the valve to the valve hole. So also let's just take a look at the tire. So the tire has a particular shape to the tread and there is a directionality to this tire because you can see that the tread has lines that point in a particular direction. You can kind of think of these as an arrow. So if you make triangle or an arrow with those with that tread pattern that's facing forward so then just take your wheel and we know that your drive sprocket here is on the right side of the bike so let's aim the tire forward put that on the right and we know that everything's aligned properly so let's just grab the valve then and feed it through the valve hole and now I'm just using both hands to grab the tire and the rim at the same time and just kind of squeeze the tire into place. So when I have the wheel and the tire like this and I'm starting to seat the bead onto the rim channel, I'm just feeding the tire into place, starting from the valve and working my way to the opposite side until I get to the very end and it just pops over the edge. So that's one side, so let's do the other side. And now I'm gonna push the valve in a little bit to give me some, some leeway here we're starting to feed this side of the bead in. Now I'm just using my thumbs to work that bead over the edge of the rim. Once again, I'm gonna start from the valve and just work my way to the opposite side of the tire. This is where it gets the tightest, so you do have to work a little bit harder to seat the bead over the edge of the rim here. But just take your two thumbs together and then just work it over. So. Once you get to this position, it might feel like it takes a lot more effort to get it here, but there is a trick to loosening the tire to help you get that over. So I'm just gonna take my thumb and just kind of work that tire in a little bit more all the way along the edge, and that'll give me some looseness to get that last part in. Similarly on this side, just kind of pinching that to get it looser to get that last part over the edge, and it just pops right over. 
So now just take your pump and your tire and you wanna push the head of the pump firmly onto the valve and then lock it in place with the lever. Uh, this might be a little bit tricky with a tire that's not fully inflated. So a trick here is just to pinch the valve against the edge of the rim so that you can push the head of the pump harder onto the valve. Now that it's locked on there nice and tight, just pump away. And this tire on the Gotham, we wanna pump this to around 80 PSI, nice and firm. If you're not sure what to pump your tire to, it's printed here on the sidewall of the tire. And they give you a range. So the minimum on this is 50, the max is 85. So we usually recommend towards the higher end of the range to prevent punctures like this. So uh, I usually recommend around 80. All right, put your valve cap back on and now we're ready to reinstall the wheel. So grab the wheel and pick your bike up and then just slide the axle right into the dropouts like so. Should just slide right in. If your bike has a coaster brake, just hold the frame in the wheel like so. Slide it into the dropouts so that your yellow washer's facing backwards. So now I'm just gonna loosely install the uh, coaster brake arm bolt. So just grab your washer, your bolt, and just feed the bolt in enough, just enough so that it holds that washer in place. Now move the coaster brake arm so that it aligns with the bolt. Just push the bolt through the coaster brake arm. Now there's a washer that goes on the outside of that. And then the nut on the other side. So right now I'm just gonna tighten that enough to hold it in place. And then once the rear wheel's in its final position, we're gonna tighten that once again. Uh, now let's install the belt back onto the cogs. So let's just loop it over the back first, being careful of the bell crank. And then I'm just gonna pop it right over the front sprocket like so. So now let's just snug those up a little bit, but then go back in and then just retension our belt with the belt tension bolts here. So as you're using the belt tension bolts to get your rear wheel in the correct position with the correct belt tension, you can look right here on the dropouts and you can see that there's a mark from where the axle nut was previously. So you can use that as a guideline to get generally where the rear wheel should end up. And that's a really easy way to start. So I'm just kind of fine tuning this to get it close to that. And now that I'm basically on it, I'm gonna tension this down. So I'm just tighten those axle nuts in place. If your bike has a coaster brake, you can go ahead and then just tighten up that coaster brake arm bolt. Final turn here, nice and tight. Good to go. Now just reinstall the bell crank. And now I'm just gonna double check that my belt tension is correct. All right, so I'm just gonna use the gate sap right now. Just open that up. And I'm going to strum my belt. We want to do a couple different positions here. All right, so we're registering a little bit on the high side, but it's very close. So I'm just going to loosen this slightly, and then I know that I'm good to go. I know that it's a little bit too tight, so I'm just going to go here. Loosen my axle nut. I'm just gonna back this off very subtly. We know it's really close, so I'm just gonna do a half turn on there. 
tighten it back up. And then I'm just going to retest with the Gates app to make absolutely sure, but I think we're good to go with that. So I'm going to snug these up. Nice and tight on here. If it's a really subtle adjustment like I just did, you really only need to loosen or tension the drive side. But if it's a big enough adjustment that it's going to throw your wheel out of alignment, then you want to definitely tension both sides. Um, OK, so now let's just reinstall the bell crank. Make sure our shift pin is in good shape. Slide that over. And then let's use our 5 millimeter Allen to tighten that up once again. And uh, the last step is to tighten your brakes. All right, so now let's just reattach your rear brake caliper. So push this side in, grab your noodle, and then just feed the noodle into place right there in the caliper. Make sure that's all the way seated. Slide your dust cover back in place. Give it a squeeze to make sure both pads are coming off the wheel, and you're good to go. If you have any questions about the flat process for either of these bikes, or any questions about our bikes in general, we're here to help seven days a week, and the contact information is on your screen.